Hello everyone, I'm Brandon K. Hedgepeth, and I just want to welcome you all here to the Tansen Talk Show. I'm so excited to have you all here today for to this episode. But without further ado, let me go ahead and introduce today's guest, Alisa Kreider. Thank you so much for being here today. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks so much for the invite, Brandon. Oh, yeah, of course. I'm just so glad to have you. And so, first of all, how are you doing here today? You know, I'm doing great. It's a Monday morning coming off a fantastic weekend. It was Earth Day, you know, this weekend. So I was able to volunteer with our local Public Relations Society of America Hampton Roads chapter over at Fort Monroe. We cleaned up the beaches and then we were able to celebrate um, after some hard work at Oozle Finch Brewing Company. So it was a blast and it felt good to give back. How are you doing? I'm doing so well and I'm so glad that the yeah, the event came out well. And so... Yeah, this was a great, great weekend, and I'm just so excited to speak with you here today. Yeah. Hey, of course. So before we get started, are you able to take a moment to go ahead and introduce yourself for the watching and listening audience here today? Happy to. Thanks. Thanks for the opportunity. So as Brandon mentioned, my name's Elisa Kreider. I'm actually born and raised in Hampton Roads. Um, I grew up in Virginia Beach, still live in the city today. Moved around a little bit. I was in Norfolk for a little bit, but for the most part, I've been right here, um, you know, my whole entire life. Um, I am the child of two um, teachers. They're both retired now. Um, but, you know, what's funny, Brandon, I always thought that I was going to go into education just like my parents. And about halfway through college, I changed my major and I said, nope, I'm going to do communications. I think that'll keep my options a little more broad. And um, we'll talk later, of course, more about how I fell into public relations. But it's just been um, a wonderful, a wonderful time. Um, I love my work-life balance and I'm just excited to, to have this conversation with you today and appreciate the opportunity. That is so great to hear. And yeah, I'm definitely excited to yeah, ask about that and dive into it. And so... Right now, I definitely know that you are yeah, a definitely vital part of PRSA Hampton Roads. And so are you able to tell us a little bit about the organization? Of course. Of course. Yeah, I, it's been my honor. Brandon, um, I've served on the board, believe it or not, six years now. Um, and I started out um, as a member and a volunteer. And when I got invited, I think it was 2018 to join the board um, wow, best decision ever. So for those of you who don't know, um, the Public Relations Society of America, it is a national group. Um, everywhere pretty much has local chapters and our Hampton Roads chapter is about 130 members. But during my presidency, I'd love to grow it to closer to 150 and, and maybe one day 200. Um, as you know, we have so many wonderful PR professionals in our region. And so we want to get them all involved. Uh, but we are the largest organization that supports public relations professionals professionals. Um, and you know that um, it merges so much with communications, journalism, all of that. So we encourage anyone who has that kind of background um, profession to get involved. Um, but besides, you know, professional tips um, and all that, it's it's incredible networking with a like-minded peers that are also in the profession. And so that's what I've gained so much from um, and, and enjoyed my time very much so. But we put on monthly events and we have all kinds of um, educational opportunities through national as well. Uh, there's conferences you can attend. Um, I honestly can't speak more highly of, of the opportunities that PRSA provides. Well, that is so great to hear that, yeah, you know, like how much you know, PRSA and PRSA, Ham PRSA Hampton Roads is really working to, yeah, you know, to speak with the people like in our community. And so, and so I guess going into the organization, how did you first find out about, you know, PRSA in general and then the Hampton Roads chapter when you were entering into it? Yeah, before I answer that, I'll also say you mentioned PRSSA, and I'm so glad you did, the Student Association. So ODU is fantastic. I don't even know how many members is in uh, its PRSSA, but Brandon is one of them, and we partner very closely um, with PRSSA. Um, Hampton University has a chapter as well. Um, I just think it's fantastic, and I wish I had been involved with that when I was in college. I didn't know about it then. I don't know, honestly, how popular it was then, um, but I got involved um, through um, a mutual friend, Sarah Buck, uh, who 
works at Cox Communications and she was a friend of mine. We actually danced together um, for fitness. And she said, you really should get involved with PRSA. And I had to say, well, what is that? You know, and she explained it. And I thought, wow, that would really benefit me in my career. And I'd be able to meet a lot of other like-minded professionals. And so it's been fantastic. So I'm forever grateful to Sarah for allowing me the opportunity to get involved. And clearly I've, I've been hooked. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And and so for you now as the yeah, the president, so how has that experience been for you thus far? And you know, ultimately what really got you to yeah, to elevate to you know, this current position? Oh, it's been a journey and it's been a really good one. So I started out as a director on the board, just like anyone would, and that's normally a three-year term. Um, but after serving a few years, I advanced to the secretary position and I really had a lot of fun in that executive seat. Um, you know, it was great, um, great opportunity. Um, normally after your secretary, you'd advance to treasurer and then, um, president-elect and then president. Um, numbers is not my strong suit, words are. <laughs> so I said, is there any chance I could skip the treasurer seat and perhaps stay in secretary two years of role? And they said, sure, you know, we'd love to have you in that role. And so that's what I did. I did two years in secretary. And then after that, um, president-elect and, and now president. Um, so it's been a journey for sure. Um, normally, um, I think, you know, serving six years on a board is not the norm, you know, but it's been that enjoyable that it doesn't feel like it's been too long. It feels just right. Um, I've been blessed to have other fantastic people serve along with me on the board, and I've learned so much from them, grown from them, and so I think that is what makes it all so wonderful. Um, it's truly, truly teamwork that makes the dream work, and we've put in a lot of hard work and, and time, um, but it's been fun. And the the give back, you know, how you, you see other members just get so excited over the events and, you know, thank you for your time and service. It, it just feels good. And we're learning so much along the way. That is so great to hear. And one of the things that, you know, having looked at the different yeah, events that you will offer, I like how, in addition to just the traditional public relations events, that you all also have ones where you all get to go out to the you know, community, help make a difference, just like you all just did this weekend. And so how important is it to you that, you know, PRSA really you know, gets out there and gets involved, stays active? Oh, it's so important, Brandon. You know, we, we pulled our members a while back. We pull them, you know, often to make sure we're delivering the types of events that they enjoy. Uh, but we had asked them, you know, what what do they care about service-wise? And so the environment was high up on the list, and so was children's literacy. Those were the top two. And so those have been the events that we've put on. Um, we've been able to benefit some charities. Um, we helped out Reach, Reading Enriches All Children. Uh, that was fantastic. Um, and so uh, we did that earlier in the year. And then, yeah, the environmental, you know, what better day to get out and, and clean up the earth on Earth Day. So we were excited to do that. And years past, we've done Clean the Bay Day. I mean, our region provides so many wonderful opportunities to, to give back. And I love seeing our members, you know, uh, take off their PR hat for a minute and just show, you know, how much they care um, about serving our community. And so we had a great group of nearly 20 people out there at Fort Monroe. Some had never been to Fort Monroe before. Um, it's our little natural uh, national monument, you know, such a gem in our backyard. So I encourage anyone who hasn't explored it yet to go do so. Uh, but it was a beautiful, beautiful day. We picked up a lot of litter and it just felt good to make it an even prettier monument. So uh, really love the variety of events, um, to your point, that we're able to put on at PRSA Hampton Roads. I'm so glad. And you mentioned children's literacy, too. So I think that's just such a great yeah, initiative to really work on. And so how's that been progressing? That's been great. You know, we've thoroughly enjoyed being able to partner with Reach this this entire year and, and give back. Um, they recently um, had to move. You know, they were part of Military Circle Mall, which we know is is closed down now. And so you can imagine there was a lot of stress that went into trying to secure a new location. Uh, but we kept in touch with um, the executive director and we're just so thrilled and cheering her on when she was able to secure this beautiful, huge new uh, location and 
and Janif Shopping Center. I encourage anyone to go. Uh, but for those of you who don't know, they have the big free bookstore. So anyone can go check out their bookstore, take home a book for maybe a niece or a nephew or um, a son or daughter, um, anyone. Uh, but they wholeheartedly encourage literacy. And it's just a wonderful thing. They have all different types of programs. I really encourage you to, to learn more about it, explore their website and go visit them at their big free bookstore. Well, I definitely hope that for everyone watching and listening, you all definitely go check them out and help support all their, you know, their efforts, because that just sounds so cool. And I'm so glad that you all are working together for, you know, for this mission. Thank you. Of course. And before I, you know, I shift gears, I did actually want to ask you about your, you know, the big event that happened, I believe just last month that, um, that you all put on in regards to, I believe it was the PRSA and, uh, AMA, um, major event. Are you able to tell us a bit about that? Oh, I'd be happy to. Yeah. Thanks for asking. So, you know, it's been an annual tradition to do a media panel, and, and each year we love to partner with the American Marketing Association, Hampton Roads Chapter, uh, because again, you know, it's our, our careers align so much, you know, us um, in PR often are marketers as well and, and vice versa. So getting together with their group, putting on a media panel with diverse members um, um, of our local media was fantastic. Um, we did it over at the Waterside District Harbor Club, which was a beautiful location. Uh, we had everything from radio to your local news. Um, it was just um, a really good conversation. Um, you know, we talked about all different types of topics. Um, in fact, it was it was so popular. We're going to do another media panel um, coming up in June. This one's going to be more re relative to the military and, and hearing from our military public affairs officers. Uh, we're going to get into a lot of conversations that I think will be of interest, like chat GBT, that little thing that's happening right now and changing our, our careers a little bit. Um, so I really, really encourage you to come to that. And I'm happy to say it's on my birthday, June 14th. <laughs> so I won't forget that date, um, but we'll have all the information you could possibly need um, and registration um, on PRSAHR.org, our website. So even if you're not a member of PRSA, um, you're allowed and encouraged to join Um and with just a nominal fee, you can register and, and come and, and meet a great group of people and learn quite a bit um, about what our public affairs officers um, have to say um, about the local trends in media and, and what's what's coming ahead. So uh, thanks for that. Uh, we, we love those events. And the only other one I'll plug that would really be, I think, impactful for all of you in the audience is... Um, we're having a half day conference in September, and this will cover all kinds of topics. Um, I don't have the exact date yet, but if you stay tuned to our social media and again to our website, prsahr.org, you'll get all the information. So everything about, you know, social media, how to make your best reel, for example, um, how to write the best press release to get attention, um, you know, uh, chat GPT, all these you know, relevant topics that we want to learn more about, uh, we will discuss at this half day conference. So again, encourage you to, to sign up and, and join and see what you can learn and meet some fantastic people. Well, I definitely hope that for all of you all in the Hampton Roads area that you all go check out, yeah, PRSA Hampton Roads, just amazing yeah, events that they have in store. And so I know for, you know, for you, you are also yeah, a member of the public relations, you know, field. And so is, has this field always been what you wanted to do? What really brought you into this field? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, it was a journey. I would say um, when I graduated college, I, I did have a communications um, degree. The track was in journalism. I knew I liked to write. And so I started out my career um, at the Hampton Ridge Chamber, which was a fantastic uh, first job. I had done an internship there, and I highly encourage anyone um, still in school to do several internships. I think I did two. Uh, a lot A lot of times I hear people doing three, four, five these days. So take any opportunity you can to do so. Uh, but they invited me to 
become a full-time employee, benefits, all that. So it was a wonderful first job experience. And at the um, Hampton Roads Chamber, uh, you get to meet so many business leaders in the region from all over um, the region. And so that helped make me, you know, so many more connections that then led me to my next job, which was at Hampton Roads Transit. Um, I was um, their spokeswoman. Um, I served on their marketing team, doing social media, all that. Um, so you can imagine that was kind of a big, exciting role, um, public transportation. Um, so, so that was a great opportunity. And so um, from there, um, that's when I really kind of um, became hooked in the in public relations more specifically. Um, and I thought, you know, social media is a lot of fun, but it's really telling the story. That is my passion. Um, I've always been a chatty person. I've always been pretty extroverted growing up. Um, and I've always been a storyteller. And that's what you get to do in the public relations field. Um, and you also get to spin things to the positive. And I don't mean lie. I don't mean that at all. But you get to, um, instead of sharing bad news, because there's always bad news out there, you get to see the good news um, and, and what's happening and have that be your story. And it's just more uplifting, I think, um, you know, um, and so I've gotten to enjoy that um, in my current job as well. So my current job, I work at the Hampton Roads Alliance and, and we are regional economic development. So we work with all 13 of our uh, region's localities with their economic development departments. And it's all about growing our region. Uh, we travel both uh, internationally and domestically. We market Hampton Roads and we encourage business to set up shop here in our region. Um, I am very, very lucky, Brandon, I hate to brag, but I am getting to go to Germany in July uh, to go on a marketing mission trip. Um, they are the manufacturing hub and they're home to, you know, a pretty cool car, Mercedes Benz, their headquarters, um, amongst many, many other manufacturing plants like steel and IMS gear. So we're going to get to uh, tour a lot of their plants, learn how they do their production. But more importantly, um, I think this will be of interest to, to you all. We're going to learn their educational pipeline. How do they prepare their youth for these positions uh, so we can do a better job making sure we're well equipped at our schools uh, to prepare for wonderful advanced manufacturing positions that we can bring to our region. So I think it's going to be a fantastic time. I'm going to learn a lot. I'm going to wear my PR hat because we're going to have a couple mayors on that trip and, and other dignitaries. Um, and we're just honored uh, to get to go learn uh, from from Germany and and take back home best practices. So thanks for asking about that. Yeah, of course. And that's so great that you are get to you know that you're able to visit Germany. And so, had you been there before? Never been. First time. <laughs> in fact, the only place I've ever been to in Europe um, is Iceland, which was just about seven months ago, and that was a, a fun yoga retreat, personal trip with some girlfriends. That is so cool. And hopefully your you know, your trip there was great. It was fantastic. <laughs> the highlight was definitely seeing the Northern Lights. I highly recommend you all make that be on your bucket list. <laughs> that is so cool that you were able to, to see that. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And so, and so I guess now that you have been within the public relations field for several years now, so... What is something that you'd say that you didn't really know about the field or expect from it when you were first starting out? You know, I think I've always thought of PR as, you know, you're equipping your leadership or you're equipping yourself to, to go on the news and, you know, all that. But so much of PR is more behind the scenes as well. Um, oftentimes you are, are getting your, um, boss prepared for these speaking opportunities, um, but you're also going out and having opportunities to tell the story yourself um, through various platforms. Um, I would say, you know, my role shifted from, you know, PR on the news, you know, public transit to uh, more behind the scenes and investor relations. Um, so public affairs maybe is more so, and, and all those fields, um, they, they get crossed the line so much. They're all so similar. Um, it's kind of requires the same skill set. Um, but for me, investor relations has been 
fantastic. And I, I didn't even know what investor relations was five years ago. So it's been a journey to be able to learn and discover um, where I feel uh, my career should go and lead. And I'll tell you, I'm, I'm loving it. I'm really having a good time and, and see myself, you know, growing with this company over the years. And um, it helps too when you work with fantastic people. Um, that's a huge plus, but it's it's just been a very fun journey to discover really the full field and all it has to offer. That is so great. And I like that you know, you mentioned that throughout your time you're in the field, like you've had so many different you know, positions that have tackled like so many different parts of the communication realm. And even that your initial studies like with journalism is even a completely different you know, aspect of it. So has it been nice being able to have almost like a full, well-rounded experience with you know, within the field? It truly, truly has. Yeah, I just feel like once you broaden, um, you know, your experiences and get to experience just different um, types of PR, like you mentioned, um, you realize, okay, well, I can do that, and I'm interested in this, and um, it just makes for even more opportunities. You know, a lot of millennials like myself and, and Gen Z, uh, we don't want to sit in one job our entire life. Like that's just not what we do anymore. And we get opportunities to grow. And, you know, my boss is so wonderful. He says, look, I hope you stay here for a long, long time. I don't want you to leave. But should you ever find an opportunity that you just don't want to miss, I encourage you and I'll help you, you know, because he he had an incredible journey too and um, got to where he is today through people helping him out. And so I think that's um, the best outlook for folks, you know, never feel like uh, you have to be in one position for multiple, multiple years, um, but this, at the same token, give it a fair chance and, you know, um, really grow with the company and, and ask for help when you need it. Um, there are no dumb questions. And so um, I really have enjoyed my career. And I think there's just so many opportunities in this region. Yeah, I'm just, yeah, I really like the way that you, you know, that you put that, because I think there's just such a great balance of, you know, not necessarily having to be tied down to one particular job or experience for like your whole life. But at the same time, I like that you mentioned, you know, to of course, give it a chance. It's not like, you know, oh, well, this one day has been horrible, you know, eh. Let, let me find the next opportunity, but, you know, to give it its own, you know, its own chance to, you know, to make an impact on you and, and truly see if they're a right fit for you. Thank you. Yeah. And I liked what you mentioned earlier too, about your favorite part about public relations is being able to tell the story and, yeah, and being able to share like the different positive aspects that are yeah, happening within the company or organization or, Whatever the case may be. So are you, able, are you able to speak a little bit more about that? Sure. I think sometimes um, you have to get really creative in your role, really always. And I encourage everyone to, to be a creator. Um, through these tough COVID years that I'm so glad we're, we're through now, um, you know, you really, everyone had to get um creative and, and think of new ways uh, to communicate. And um, I know I was hired and, and within three months is when COVID hit, but my role was to put on big events like in person. And so I really, really did have to think through, you know, how are we still going to keep all these investors engaged and, um, you know, make sure they understand the value of their membership um, because my position is, is sales based too. Um, and so I think, um, you know, we were able to get creative like everyone else um, through online technologies and, and communication. And honestly, Brandon, at the end, I think it made us all a little bit stronger and a little bit more um, closer knit. Um, you know, I've never seen so many regional organizations similar to mine get together and work smarter, not harder. Um, we're not duplicating efforts like we may have had in the past where um, we all play our role and we're communicating so much more. And I, I honestly think COVID helped with that, helped bridge that gap. Well, that is you know, really interesting to, you know, but I mean, th that is so true, especially, you know, that that time really, you know, forced you all to, you know, think outside the box and it's like, okay, well, here's what we used to do. Here's what we can't do anymore. So, but how do we get to this type of outcome? Exactly. Yeah, I think everyone, um, you know, learned a lot through those difficult years. Um, 
and, and we took a lot for granted too. Um, but at the end of the day, I think it's made us all stronger people and, and stronger communication communicators. Um, I know definitely not everyone was as comfortable doing what we're doing today, Brandon, you know, being on camera, talking, um, you know, through virtual platforms, but now we don't think twice about it. It's just another wonderful way to, to communicate and uh, get work done. So. Yeah, that is cool. So true. And I remember even when I you know, was first starting off with everything, you know, for at least for podcasting and my current iteration in January of 2020 and recording everything virtually. I remember how many people I know you know, were very skeptical of doing anything like, you know, online for a recording. And then just, you know, just like a year later that it's just had become the norm. And yeah, you know, it wasn't like this foreign. Yeah, it wasn't this foreign thing anymore. It's just everyday life. That's right. <laughs> we all adjusted. <laughs> yeah, that is so true. And so, how do you see the public relations field, yeah, you know, continuing to grow and evolve over these next few years while still being able to retain its impact and meaning? Oh my gosh buckle up, right? I feel like we have so many changes coming our way, maybe faster technology than we'd request. Um, I just can't get over all this chat GBT. I mean, I can, you know, put in a prompt and, and have a whole uh, speech prepared, um, you know, in a matter of seconds, uh, which is just crazy. I, I think, you know, PRSA has done a really good job helping people understand uh, the new technology, um, but nobody really knows how far it's going to go. So I think I'd encourage everyone just to stay up to date on it and, and learn about it. Um, but I also think, you know, uh, don't forget you're a good writer and can do all this by yourself, too. I think um, it's easy to kind of almost go overboard sometimes with it. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think, uh, you know, using it more as a resource and a tool um, is the best uh, for sure. But I think I think there's a lot that we don't know yet, Brandon. Um, so I'm I'm excited for it. I think it's incredible. Um, but um, it's it's just unbelievable at the same time. <laughs> Yeah, that is so true. And I think that's always the hard part, you know, is trying to figure out when the new technology comes in. Yeah. You know, how much do we allow it to really come in and yeah, you know, and change things? Is this a technology we can use for the better? How much one we can use for the worse? And there's so much middle ground with it, too. So true. Yeah. And if you really think about it, like so much stuff that we even think is just normal parts of our life, just you know, start off the same way as well. So we just really have to see where, you know, where everything progresses. Yeah. Be ready for the change and be adaptable and um, yeah, be skeptical, too. That's OK, too. But I think just be prepared. Um, you know, technology uh, is only advancing quicker and quicker um, these days. That is so true. And so I actually did want to ask, so for your personal, you know, public relations journey and even personal you know, journey as well, what would you say is something that people oftentimes don't you know, really have a chance to ask you that you would like people to, you know, to know? Oh, that's a great question. Um, you know, I think it's fair to just remind people, um, you don't have to know exactly what your five-year plan is. I know that's the question we all get in every single interview, and it's the most intimidating question, um, but it's okay to, to not have some fleshed out response for that. I think um, as long as you are always, you know, furthering your education, whether that's through, you know, school, uh, another master's program, something like that, or it's simply um, joining a board, um, getting involved, taking some online courses. I think as long as you're interested and happy in your field, you're in the right spot. You know, uh, you're going to have good days. You're going to have bad days. Um, you're never going to be a hundred percent happy in a role because that's just not possible, you know, but at the end of the day, if it's fulfilling, um, if you can manage that work-life balance, um, if you feel like you're giving back and you're learning and growing and you're surrounded by some good people too, to encourage you along the way, then you're in the right spot. Keep going, keep going, you know, but I think it's important to know when we were younger, um, you know, you'd have one really bad day and think, that's it. You know, I got to quit, but it's no, 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 no. It's like, you know, those days only make you stronger. 
Um, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Kelly Clarkson. Thank you. It's so true. You know, so, um, I just encourage you all to, to have patience, um, uh, just be willing to um, be humble and uh, learn from others and um, collaborate um, and just be open-minded, open-minded, I think. And so, um, you know, I feel like remembering all that um, along the journey, it just helps a lot. And um, yeah, I think that'd be my piece of advice I'd share to someone, um, to my younger self, to anyone younger. I absolutely love that. And yeah, I mean, it's just so great that I said that you're able to come here and, you know, I really have yeah, enjoyed like the depths of our conversation and, and I just love, like I've mentioned a few times, just all of the efforts that you all are doing for the community. And I mean, it's just so impactful. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this opportunity to share the story. And uh, Brandon, it was so cool to meet you. We actually got to meet in um, Dallas, Fort Worth area of Texas. Uh, we were both um, at a PRSA uh, icon conference. And so uh, that's when we got to know each other. And it's just so cool, all the different opportunities um, that are provided, uh, be it through PRSA in this example or work. Um, so just take full advantage and, and go travel and, you know, experience different things. But, um, Brandon, it's been a pleasure getting to know you. I'm excited to get to see you at a couple of the upcoming events as well. Yeah, I'm so excited as well. And if you don't mind me asking, I did want to ask, how was your, how was the rest of your experience with the icon event this past November? Oh, it was fantastic. I mean, what a great opportunity to learn and grow and meet other professionals in your career that live all over, all over the United States. Um, so just a lot of different perspectives. Um, highly encourage people to, to go to conferences um, because you just, you learn so much. You really, really do. You take back so much um, notebooks full, <laughs> uh, but also the connections, you know, being able to reach out to a PR professional, you know, um, in Wisconsin <laughs> and hey, what's the latest here? So um, great experience. Thanks for asking. Of course. And and yeah, but I know that we don't have, you know, a lot of time, but I did want to as one thing, and as we, you know, begin to close out, though, so, so you know, since your organization, PRSA Hampton Roads, and actually, I guess, um, both that and your tradition, your, your regular job as well, are definitely very tied to the Hampton Roads region. What would you say makes the Hampton Roads region special for you? Oh, love that question. You know, being born and raised here, I'm probably biased, but we have such incredible assets in Hampton Roads. 3,000 miles of coastline. I mean, water, water, water. Uh, we have unbelievable um, options for where you're going to live. Uh, you know, do you want to have a lot of land and be out in Chesapeake? Do you want to live on the water, you know, in the Virginia Beach or Norfolk? Um, I mean, we just have so many opportunities. Live on a horse farm, you know, whatever, whatever you want, three and a half hours from the mountains. Uh, we are so centrally located on the East Coast that we can get anywhere um, in less than seven, eight hours. Uh, most people, and most states cannot say that. So I think we're extremely fortunate. We, of course, um, are home to the largest naval base. Uh, we have an incredibly deep harbor uh, for our incredible port of Virginia. We're very blessed in this region. Um, I just really encourage, you know, all students contemplating, should I leave the area? No, stay here, experience more, you know, of Hampton Roads and, and the wonderful um, job offerings we have here and, and just grow in the region. Uh, because if you do leave, you're probably going to come back. We see a lot of boomerangs, but I, I'm very passionate about the region. I've always enjoyed having regional positions um, from the chamber to HRT to uh, now the Hampton Roads Alliance. And so I'm, I'm here for the long run. This is my home and I'm very proud to call it home. Well, I'm just so glad that we had a chance to speak with you. And if there's anywhere online that people can, you know, can follow you or continue hearing your story or PRSA Hampton Roads for that matter, where's the best place to find you all? Yeah, a couple leave behinds, you know, PRSAHR.org, learn about what we have offering. And even if you're not a member, come out, join our events. Um, and me personally, I hope you all join me on LinkedIn. Um, Alisa Kreider, I know the name's here on the screen, uh, but just uh, friend me there and send me a quick message that you heard the podcast um, and would love to connect further with you on there. Well, that is so great to hear. And I know one of the things I love doing towards the end is 
yeah, is allowing for yeah, my guests to leave a piece of advice. And I know that you had already done that, but if there's anything else that you'd like to say to close out, please feel free to do so. Yeah, I would just say keep your optimism, um, stay positive. There's just so much this wonderful region offers us and uh, so many opportunities in our positions to learn and grow. And just so keep your chin up and, and keep positive and um, learn um, along your journey. And, and it's OK to ask for help when you need it. Um, so that that would be my last advice. Well, that is so great to hear. As always, you are always welcome here on the podcast, and it's just so great being able to speak with you again. Thanks again, Brandon. Take care. You too. For those of you watching or listening, thank you all so much for tuning in. And I always love you know, being here and to support just such amazing people. But until next time, have a wonderful day, everyone, and let's make things happen. Well, I'll see you all later. Take care. And that's a wrap on this episode. Thank you all so much for tuning in to the Tansen Talk Show. A big thank you goes out to our sponsor, Descript, for sponsoring this episode. If you're interested in checking out transcription tools, be sure to find our affiliate link for Descript in the description of this episode. Also, if you'd like to check out any of our official merchandise, go ahead and find us at merch.tansenmedia.com. Of course, be sure to subscribe to the Tansen Talk Show on YouTube or anywhere you can find podcasts. Until next time, this has been Brandon, and I'll see y'all later. Take care.